Hi, you're watching Good Deeds Blossom, Sid USA's 30th anniversary special edition. I'm Dilbar Shatterson. I'm coming to you from the City Center in New York, and we're celebrating the achievements, growth, and future of Tsiji USA. One of them includes Tsiji San Francisco's 25th year of service. The city itself most commonly conjures images of the majestic Golden Gate Bridge, a booming capital of tech and investment, and a thriving startup scene. But in this area of great opportunity and wealth, there are communities within it that have been left on the fray. Bayview Hunters Point is a case in point, where changing and abandoned industries over the years have transformed the once thriving economic landscape of the area into one riddled with gun violence and long-running tensions between residents. In this episode, you'll meet a few community activists working diligently to peacefully change the tide of their neighborhoods, where up to a third of the population are children. Back in the mid-2000s, Tsuji volunteers began working with schools in San Francisco to implement a holistic educational program that would become known as the Happy Campus. It provided students with character education-based lessons and branched out into distributing snack packs, school supplies, teaching the arts and Chinese, and offering supplemental tutoring in reading and math. To date, the program has touched the lives of 10,000 students in Bayview Hunters Point and their families, even providing furniture and other household goods for those who needed it. But now, the campus has expanded to address more dire social issues through the happy community. Take a look. No, it wasn't in the neighborhood. It was actually at Tamforan Mall. Yeah, it was at Tamforan Mall. And gentlemen, from what I understand, they only been there for like 30 minutes. And uh, disagreement happened. And out of disagreement, uh, they got caught in the line of fire. Shots rang out just before four this afternoon at the Tanferan Mall in San Bruno, and it sent terrified shoppers running for their lives. Those victims were taken to SF General Hospital. The hospital tells us it's treating two patients. One is in critical condition. The other is in stable condition. You can see the victims. And now we have today. You know, he was just doing what any other kid, going to get him some shoes, you know. So in the process of going to get shoes, you know, now he has to deal with a life wound. You know, he's coming up to see how he's doing, man. Appreciate Let it. me know if there's anything actually you need me to do, bro. Okay, I got you. That was his dad. Yeah. The sweet thing is that he didn't leave us. The sour, sour, salty, sour, bitter thing is that he has to deal with a life scar that he could have possibly died. It's like lemon meringue pie, you know. It's sour and sweet. Turner's Point is in San Francisco, California, the southeast sector of San Francisco. It was once known as, they once considered it South San Francisco. This dynamic here is really dealing with folks, dealing with a series of traumas. Trauma number one, the city of San Francisco really treating Baby Hunters Point and other places like it, sort of like the drunk uncle at the party, like never mind him, we're over here at the main table type of thing, you know. A lot of our students are struggling. And so we play a little part in providing something that'll uplift our student spirit. You can hear it? This is our little Diego. <laughs> what color is that, Diego? Blue. Blue, very good. So Happy Campus provides uh, enrichment for our students, which is cooking, um, arts and crafts, sports. And then we also provide academics support, which is reading and math. So before Suchi came along, we didn't have healthy education. We didn't have support in academics with math and reading. 
So we, we started in uh, John Muir 2006. After that, our master has directed us to come to Bayview Hunters Point. So from one school in a different area, we are in Bayview Hunters Point for the five schools. It has been since 2009 to right now 10 years. So we have uh, impacted probably 10,000 students. Goodbye, teacher. It's a teacher. One, two, three. Okay, I'll see you if you're going to Chinatown with us. So I told Sister Ru that we have to have a, a really official program to get the connection going between Happy Campus and Happy Community. And it's why we said, let's go to Taiwan. Let's bring our kids. Let's bring our community anchors. So grateful that uh, to share this uh, great journey with you all. And thank you for giving us this opportunity. So, Gan Han. We want to uh, really showcase to all those educators. Taiwan, Siji, really has rich humanity and rich education and then really, you know, a good the medical support they can learn from. I was in I was in my room, I was just doing my thing, and my mom and my sister they came up and they was like, hey yeah, you wanna go to Taiwan? I was like, what? <laughs> like what? And uh, secondly for those students, I really want them to be able to see everything outside of uh, the Bayview Hunters Point in San Francisco and in a totally different cultural uh, framework. I actually became friends with one of the students at the high school. It was so great because we got to like experience the classes that they have there and the way that they do things. And they feel that, you know, it's a sense of freedom, a sense of uh, confidence, a sense of independence from the trip. I started cooking. <laughs> I felt like a different person. <laughs> I felt like a different person coming back. Near the end of the trip, we got to meet the Dharma master, Chen Yan. It was so like inspiring. That she told us that I am very, very proud of what you have done as a group. And you have my encouragement and you have my endorsement. And what you are doing in Happy Campus is only halfway. The Buddhahood, in fact, uh, will have to be reached through going to the community. Okay, you are such a big sister. I appreciate it. So do you still remember what you did? in Taiwan. So, it's, you know, I'm wavering power. You can do it, okay? You know what you're here for? To do the community cleanup, okay? But you can do it, right? So every Saturday, we have a blue bag Saturday for people to bring in their recycled more goods and plus their compost bin. So today is a special day because in addition to recycling me, we are going to set a good example to go to uh, 2700, one of the building, to clean up the entire building. <laughs> because you are white or you are black or you are Asian or you are Hispanic, we are all here as one family to get our family beautiful together. I think that uh, it's waking up a lot of people to be more conscious of where they put their trash. I think it brings our community a little bit closer together. Because the more people know us, the more they're willing to trust us. I'm not afraid to talk to the teenage boys around here. I'm not afraid to talk to the teenage girls around here. I have that respect. 
I also give them respect. As you can see, this is my bed. This is the one that I got as a flutter after my, my place got flooded. The recite, we do recycling with sushi and I work with them on Saturdays. And this is what I got as a appreciation. But um, the mattress is, when you sit down, it's, it's like wire. Oh my God, yes, it feels so, so comfortable. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> and you're safe, I'm safe, the trash will be safe. When the wind comes, there's no warning. This is a tribute to Laurent, who was a janitor who was murdered uh, last month. And, um, it used to be out on the street where he died, and then I guess they moved it over to here after a while. I would say this because they have, these people down here have seen a lot, a lot. And a lot of them don't know how to cope with the problem that they have in their community. And then you have some with a lot of anger inside of them. But what goes on in their community, they feel nobody's reaching out to them to help them. Once you have a scar, a shot scar, it's, it's never really settled. I mean, you have to settle within yourself to realize that you're going to have this scar for the rest of your life. Father, assuming you went to the victim. Yeah. Can you tell us about where, how he's doing now? He's doing good. He's doing good. He's, 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 he's walking around, he's doing all right. So um, I think in the long run, you know, we're doing baby steps now, but as we go and as we get the ball rolling, we get more and more people to have pride in our community. You know what I'm saying? And it'll work, but I think it's making a dent. As a unit, as a race, as a people. As take a village to raise a kid, it's gonna take a whole community to put their best foot forward. And that's what we did, that's what Sushi did today. They put their best foot forward. And I think they'll get more people to get involved to help. As we're seeing the seeds of compassion beginning to blossom after 10 years, it's our hope that Suji's efforts can help empower locals to be agents of change and forces for good. And this is critical in helping Bayview Hunters Point prepare for yet another big change. Property development and gentrification. To accommodate the growing interest in real estate and a population boom in the Bay Area, developers have already begun the work of creating new housing units. And don't let its San Fran aesthetic fool you. The glass on the windows are bulletproof. For those buildings that have already been built, we're seeing an influx of new residents, many of them foreign-born and coming from Asian or Latino backgrounds. It's changing the current cultural milieu of Bayview Hunters Point, yet city volunteers have already laid out the groundwork needed to help integration along. For instance, being consistent and building trust through its happy community efforts, teaching school children Chinese, sending students and school staff on a trip to experience Taiwan, or even with cooking demonstrations, like the kind you'll soon see. They're all intended to help humanize minority groups and expand understanding of all forms of the human experience. In fact, you can see it for yourself in this next video. I did it uh, from the old legacy group. We have 200 families and two thirds of them uh, African-American family. So we're watching uh, uh, the properties being imploded and do this, uh, you know, uh, recycling uh, kind of sign-up program, uh, and people, you know, just come to see us. When they come to see us, uh, they, they see us as uh, a group. Uh, they will offer them solution, offer them comfort, and giving them advice. 
do something. You have to call the love deposit, yeah. not the pictures. Yeah. You know, right. you know, yeah. yeah. So, you know, just being here in a certain time and then consistently, they has uh, given the community an anchor. So they know to look for us on Mondays. She really enjoys cooking, and I know that right now she's working in uh, the school setting, helping uh, the school preparing healthy food for the students. And she has expressed her interest in learning you know, Chinese cooking. And so I said, oh, that would be a good graduation gift for her to give her an electrical walk. So I recently just graduated from Woodside International High School. Well, I was born and raised in the original Deborah until I was about 17 or so. And then, um, then I, we all moved down here. Well, my mom knew who Suchi was before I did. And so what happened was that my mom talked to Roxanne and Minlin about how um, how I was still, because I was a junior at the time, and she was talking about how I was in honors chemistry and how um, I was struggling a bit, and she, like, they recommended a tutor for me. And so we went out to look for a Sichin alum who is in fact a very uh, proficient in high school chemistry. And at first I was like, I don't want a tutor. Like, I, I don't need one. I'm fine. After going once, I was like, yeah, I'm going to stick with this tutor for, <laughs> for a while. Like, seriously, I would not have made it. I, I, I wouldn't have made it through, through school without him. <laughs> Cause she's gonna stay here in the city, so she's still gonna stay on campus, get the experience of being away from home and being away from mom. <laughs> I'm gonna be attending California College of the Arts, and I'll be pursuing illustration and creative writing. The new community will be 500 in total, so that means you have 300 new units coming in. Among those 300 units coming in, two thirds, in fact, are Asian or Chinese uh, people. And how we uh, really uh, integrate everybody together and then feel that they are one community has been number one challenge for Ciji too. So uh, we say, hey, let's uh, uh, really design a vegetarian food and healthy diet cooking class. And again, you know, to get everybody together, to get the community to uh, be one family eating the same meal they cook together. So that's why you know, we are doing it.
，都很满意。And I'm rock and stuff, and all the people that I grew up around. And, um, it's gonna be really different. It's it's gonna be a new experience. Just, body health is okay. Okay, I think it's just like, no big hopes. Just, I hope his body is healthy. Okay, I think it's just like, no big hopes. Just, I hope his body is healthy. Okay, I think it's just like, no big hopes. Just, I hope his body is healthy. Okay, I think it's just like, no big hopes. I'm just hoping I could come back here, so give back to the community in some in some way I can involving art. <laughs> he actually just every week he just came to visit. I'm very happy. My daughter is very happy to see the Shizhi people. Every time I see them, I'm very happy. Mommy, it's Shizhi. They came. They're here. 在家里就喊着在墙墙上看下去，你看刚好看到，出去来了，我们快快快点下楼，很开心哈、啊。It touches our hearts to give communities like those in Bayview Hunters Point hope, but the work to be done in Southeast San Francisco is far from over. To resolve the issues that are embedded deep in neighborhoods like this one, a holistic and long-term approach is needed. Understanding this fact is what has led to the development of the happy community itself, which believes in the transformative power of compassion and relief. Starting with guiding and mentoring children who are just beginning their formative years of school, Tsuji volunteers like Roxanne Buckwitz had the unique opportunity to introduce their work to families and local leaders and gain trust through their sincerity and action. Over time, that's blossomed into what we see today with community initiatives like Blue Bag Saturday, Monday meetings, and so much more. Join us next time, where we'll show you Tsuji San Francisco's work to fight food insecurity in Bayview Hunters Point, yet continue to foster the children of the Happy Campus as they grow and move forward in their lives. I'm Dilbar Shatterson, and this is Good Deeds Blossom, Tsuji USA's 30th anniversary special edition. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week.